everybody. My name is uh, Mandy Howe, and I'm going to uh, kind of let you know uh, what I learned when I changed careers. Um, on, uh, on this slide, when I was first starting out, Kimberly asked me to, to do this talk, I had uh, midlife in there because that's when I decided to, uh, to change careers. But I thought once I started going through um, what I wanted to share today, I figured out that it doesn't just apply to someone who's uh, changing in the, mid, in, in the middle of their career or middle of their life. Um, there's, there's stuff that I think everybody can, can uh, use. So a little bit of background about me. I worked for a generation and transmission cooperative for over 15 years as a systems analyst. Um, some of the things I did there, uh, develop software when needed You'll notice that I really wanted that to stand out. Um, that wasn't my, my main uh, task while I was there. Um, it was kind of when software was needed or something needed to be fixed. Um, you know, it wasn't what I was doing day to day. Um, some other things that I did was hardware support. Mostly this was servers. You know, if your power supply went out at 3 a.m., you drove into work and, you know, changed it out or whatever. Um, database administrator, we mostly used uh, SQL Server, but I did inherit an Oracle um, database system. So, you know, you had to install it, set it up, security, all of that stuff. Um, and like I said, uh, software, they purchased software and uh, Sometimes you were in on, you got to choose what software, and sometimes it was kind of thrown at you and you just learned, uh, learned as you go. So the reason I tell you all this is, is a bit of foreshadowing to um, what made me decide to change careers. So, well, first off, we talked about middle life. I wasn't getting any younger and nobody's told me where the fountain of youth is. You guys find it, let me know. Um, so, you know, if I was going to do it, I needed to jump. And uh, another thing was, you know, I'd already had experiences where I, I'd tell myself, man, you know, when I was at this time in my life, I wish I would have done this. And that, that ship had sailed. And I didn't want that to be what I said. And, uh, and my, my ship on this one is um, love writing code, what are, you know the writing, debugging, enhancements, figuring out, that's what I love to do. Um, I was also in a good spot financially. I don't think that should be a requirement if you, if you really want to change careers, but it really did help me on the stress level. Um, and again, love working with code. So I wanted that to be what I did day in and day out. I didn't want the other duties as assigned or you know, having to pull off the code to go fix a server or, you know, network issues or, or anything like that. Um, and, you know, they weren't a software, well, they're not a software um, place. And so they just wanted it to work. They weren't receptive to great improvements or using technology, if new technology. You know, if it was going to break something, they were like, it's, it's working, why mess with it? So after 15 years, I had experience, but not necessarily the experience that I needed to move on. So um, yeah, I had used the same tools, means they're, they're more familiar, they're stable, but also I got left behind. I mean, I had some side projects that I would do, but you know, you have life coming at you and you can't always spend a whole lot of time learning what you need to with these tools to, for a company to be um, confident that you can do the work. That being said, you know, experience is experience. You learn um, not only what you want, but maybe what you don't want. So, like I said before, I wanted to work with code most of the time, and I wanted to be able to try on that new and fresh technology. Um, what I didn't want to do was, you know, the hardware support, the database administration responsibilities. I think we all realize that when we work with code, we are going to have to interact with the database, but I didn't want to be the one to take care of the back end. So what I would pass on 
to anyone who's um, thinking about doing this, and your mileage may vary. This is just my, what I gathered. Um, have a plan. You know, it doesn't have to be, I'm not changing it, this is the way I'm always going to do it plan. But, you know, have kind of an idea of what you want. You know, um, some of these things might be, what salary do you need? You know, are you willing to give up a little bit of salary to do the stuff that you want to do all the time? Um, or do you have commitments that you need that income? Uh, benefits are always a big thing. You know, you have, you have the big ones, health insurance and retirement. But, you know, do you want perks? Do you want ping pong tables and, and free beer? Um, you know, what kind of environment do you want to work in? You know, are you really adverse to working in a, an open plan? Or, you know, because I will tell you, going from an office to an open plan, big change. Um, do you want to work in a small shop or do you want to work in an international shop? Because there are differences. Um, and, you know, like I found out, what work do you want to avoid? What, what do you, would you rather not do if you can keep from it? Um, and so on this plan, know what parts are you can, you will, you're willing to compromise on and know which ones are, are firm and that you, uh, you don't want to, uh, to have any flexibility in. Um, and it's okay to be uncomfortable. I mean, after 18 years at one place, I was pretty scared um, to make that jump. But, uh, you know, when we're thrown into a fire, that's when we grow and learn. So, uh, thanks. Um, I'm on the, the Techlahoma workspace, uh, LinkedIn, GitHub, Twitter, all these. So feel free to reach out. Any questions right now? One of the first things you did was kind of get the back end for the development and, and get yourself going. Um, well, so to make it personal, I was willing to give up a little bit of salary so that I could make that jump. And so when I got into my new job, um, basically they kind of threw me in and had me fix small problems. So, you know, if, but if you don't have that, take on, you know, find the language that you're wanting to write, take on a project. I mean, if you're staking your career on it, you may have to give up some other personal commitments to, you know, to get it done and, and get the knowledge that you need. Was it a little bit harder for you to find um, a job or like how many interviews and companies yeah. did you have to talk to? Yeah, so, you know, I guess you always, when you, you start, you're like, oh, I'm going to find a job right off, you know, and uh, it took me, well, so I started just kind of putting feelers out and see, and that, I did that for about three months, and then I started in earnest, and it took me a good four months to find the job that I have now. And during that time, I was, I was learning all these things that, yeah, you know, you were a senior before, but you don't have that experience to translate. And so you may have to, I had to make my plan a little bit more flexible. And that's when I, you know, gave up a little bit of salary to jump in because I knew that if I got in, I could prove, you know, hard work. Everybody can work hard. You know, you may not have the knowledge, but you can work hard and you can try to learn. And I knew if I could get in, I could prove that, that I had those tangibles. So, thank you. Anybody else? Thanks.